could not be more impressed with uh, Hendon Hooker. Could not be more impressed with Josh Heupel. Could not be impressed more impressed with the whole Tennessee team. And this is why. And this is why I thought Alabama would win in a different, t- not only win, but cover. And at different times, they were going to win and cover. But every time Alabama did their Alabama thing mm-hmm. and stomped on, about to stomp on the heart, the scoop and score uh, being the biggest one. Hooker Hooker blows that handoff, and it's a scoop and score. Alabama is going to win this game, and this is when the other team crumbles. Yep. yep, they pressure. It's like that old Mike Tyson line: everyone's got a plan to get punched in the mouth, and that's when Alabama wins the game. And Tennessee said, "Not today." Josh Heupel coached like he was. Uh, not a fourth-year head coach, but like he was Nick Saban's equal because he was. He was his superior on Saturday. Mm -hmm. No fear. This is a guy who won a national championship as a quarterback, and that he doesn't carry himself with that kind of like bravado. No. But it's in there, and he just said, hell no, we're going to call these plays. And Hooker said, hell no, I'm not. Not no, I'm not falling apart. That was the part about this game that was so exciting, I think, for Tennessee fans because it was like we're standing up, and even when we start Tennesseeing or whatever you want to call it, or or just succumbing to what Alabama is, we said we're gonna stand up and out outdo you. And that that to me blew me away about this game beyond all the individual performance and everything. They call they score 78 yard touchdown after that scoop and score. That nine times out of 10 the last 15 years, that's a pick. They throw a pick and Alabama scores again and they end up winning by 24. And you're going, yeah, yeah, but it was really close. Yeah, sure it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the Arkansas game. It would have been like, you know, like Arkansas came yeah. all the way back and then yep. a couple things happened and that was it. And they fell, a, they kind of fell apart. Um, yeah, after the scoop and score, I think everybody in the press box thought, well, that's it. And you can kind of see everybody oh. just started writing. Everybody started writing their story. That yeah. was it. And you look up and boom, they tie the game with the with the 70 plus yarder. Uh Heupel is, you know, spent a week almost a week in, in Knoxville and spent time with him. And he I think Dan, you described it right. Like he he is super humble, quiet, mild mannered, just kind of boring. Like just kind of boring. Mm-hmm. You know, goes about the business. Man, every time I looked on the sidelines, that dude was jumping up and down or running toward the end zone. He almost made it to the pylon one time, like celebrating. He was in it, man. He was in it. Uh, and obviously, he called the game um, that way as well. Brilliant. And I, I think of the last throw of the game, um, Kendon Hooker, I think there was nine seconds left. Is that right around midfield or so, or, or maybe on the mm-hmm. 45? They needed to get about 20 more yards. He stood in the pocket, o- almost like a statue, just stood there. It was kind of started to collapse, started to collapse, and just stood right in there, fired a freaking missile, and his receiver took one step up. I think it was Brew McCoy, USC transfer, took one step up to grab it perfectly. And and, and it was just that, the, to me, it was like this, that's just a Heisman moment, you know, and he had a lot of them there. And that was that was another one, and the, the freaking uh, Jalen Hyatt, you know, five oh, touchdowns, God, and two hundred yards, unbelievable! It was unbelievable. I mean, I mean, Alabama uh, number two for Alabama. I'm, I'm missing on his name, but he could not. I felt bad for him by the end of the game. He just could not stay with with Jalen Hyatt. Alabama, no one who could, or they would have yeah. put him on him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. He, here's my theory. Let me th- test this out on you guys. You tell me what you think. Second year transfer quarterback comes in. First year, very good. Second year, takes it up to another level. You get an offensive whiz calling plays for him. You get this stable of receivers that's unbelievable, and you go say, we're going to go take down Alabama. Sounds like LSU 2019 to me. I was about to say, I know what you're getting at. I'm not sure any of them are as good. I don't know whether Mm -hmm. Hendon Hooker's going to be Joe Burrow. I don't know whether they have a Jamar Chase, but my gosh, between Hyatt, Bruce McCoy, Cedric Tillman, who's hurt. You know, they, they may yeah. not have a Clyde Edwards Alaire. I don't think they're Joe Brady deep. and Josh Heupel could dial yeah. it up. They don't I have mean, the talent that LSU. Has. They, yeah, they don't have no. the defensive talent for but, sure. But I think right. it's a good comparison offensively. I do.